So today we are going to be talking about how COVID-19 has affected college students and their social well-being. Um, I am Trevor. I'm Dr. Coons. Dimitri. Abraham. Adam. Brandon. Alrighty. So first let's talk about what exactly is social well-being. Um, this is one of the main facets of an individual's health on top of their physical health and their mental health. Um, it's defined as an individual self-report of the quality of his or her relationship with other people, the neighborhood, and the community. Um, healthy individuals feel that they are a part of the community. They don't feel isolated. They are optimistic about the future, and uh, they want to build these social relationships because these relationships are critical to build, uh, to build their future. Um, Wanting to feel connected and be around other people is a natural impulse. Um, we are social creatures. So um, you think about this maybe like caveman days or even just maybe 50, 100 years ago. Um, people really are dependent upon other people. So we need other people in order to survive pretty much. So why is social well-being important? Um, before social well-being, um, you can look at economic measures to measure how a society is doing. Um, one of these measures is the gross domestic product. Um, this, could be a this could be an indicator of how the society standard of living um, is going, but it's only a rough indicator. Um, it does not account for other factors such as leisure, <coughs> such as your environment quality, um, the level of health and education, or other values that society uh, might place as, as higher on the totem pole. Um, so let's say like a worker is working 100 hours a week. That worker, he is increasing the gross domestic product. However, his social well-being probably isn't higher than the worker that's working 40 hours a week just because he's overworking himself. Um, richer countries are not necessarily happier than, um, than poorer countries. But those, so that means that the poorer countries most likely have a higher social well-being. So that's why we like to measure that instead of just uh, the economic measures like the GDP. Um, so um, in today's social world, uh, social media is thriving. As you can see, 72% of US adults use social media. 69% of adults use Facebook. 73% of adults use Snapchat, 75% of adults 18 to 24 use Instagram, and 73% use uh, visit YouTube regularly. Um, algorithm, algorithms that social media use are addictive, and they release dopamine in your brains, like when a notification comes up, or there's a never-ending uh, loop of content. So, these companies nowadays are profiting based on your attention. So the more you're on these sites, the more profit that they make. So they incentivize your uh, taking more of your attention. Um, today's social cues have been digitized into likes, shares, and follows, which again is optimized for the profitability of these companies. So that brings us into the question is, social media connecting us too much and is it affecting our health? Uh, and I'm gonna talk about how our social well-being is being affected by COVID-19. <clears throat> so some of the factors that our the COVID-19 have affected. Keep going. Some of the factors that COVID-19 have affected is the, the stay at home, curfew, the closure of schools and just the list continue on individual freedom. So COVID-19 are really like pull hold on to all the well-being as I got Trevor talk about how we are uh, social creatures and we need to socialize for COVID-19 and pull hold on to that. <coughs> so with, with being social creatures, our relationship with family and friends is very important because this is where we gain our love from, our freedoms, and it helps us build our confidence and make us feel that we are part of a community and we are part of not just ourselves, but other people, and it makes us feel important as well. Yeah, so 
So another thing that like, uh, that's gonna COVID really give um, affect us is our loneliness, and you can see. I think we all know that COVID nineteen makes uh let go on our home a lot. We spend a lot of time on social media, and that you feel like you are connected to people with your phone texting and chatting, but you are just in your bed or sitting in your car <coughs> texting five hundred people, but you are stay alone and. That is all caused by COVID-19, and it, it has really affected how we we are productive in our well-being and, and other exercises and all that. So I talked about this the last time, and we'll just briefly go over this. And so COVID-19 has affected us two days, like hierarchy of needs, and self actualization is one way, and because we don't see ourselves being very productive, like we want to be the best humans we can be, but COVID-19 cannot make us maybe go to the library and be reading our notes and stuff. And our self-esteem, which is how we gain respect and status, and you want to do that in being free. You want to go to Walmart, you want to go to other places, and maybe you think, <coughs> oh yeah, you are part of, <coughs> you are part of something, and COVID-19 has taken that away from us and our love and belonging, which is like, you cannot probably go to Thanksgiving to see your grandparents because of COVID and, and all that has affected how we as a social human being can interact. <coughs> and our safety and need is one big impact COVID has taken away from us because we don't feel safe even when we are around people because of COVID, you are like scared to shake someone's hand, scared to hug someone. And, that's a very big part of being a social creature and just our being like, I think we all remember COVID-19 made people are running around to get toilet tissue, water on your hands, one mark on the go empty of those things. Mm -hmm. And that's just show that COVID-19 has seriously and continue to impact our social well-being. Yeah, so we we'll move on to our research question. So just expanding a little bit more in depth on the research question, how has COVID-19 affected college students and their social well-being? And we're gonna be exploring aspects more in depth, such as time spent with family and friends and on social media throughout this event. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the survey. So obviously we used a website Qualtrics for a survey. So we sent it out to students, we sent it out to our friends. We have a couple athletes here, so we sent it out to their respective sports teams, and then basically got the feedback that way. We originally wanted about 300 students, got about half of that. So basically, first step, we have the introduction there. So basically, students would read the introduction followed by the consent form. So if they agree to the terms, then they take the survey, obviously. So we have different demographic questions, age, if they have a job, um, time spent on social media, and time spent with family. And the first hypothesis we concluded on is decrease in time spent with family causes one to have worse social well-being. You know, why is that? Uh, students don't feel comfortable traveling and going uh, to different places with COVID being a huge risk now. And lack of family or friends contact, uh, we're seeing, um, I wanna say, more cases pop up with social isolation and depression and lack of communication with family is just causing uh, less trust with families and more emotional social hardships and so on. All right, so then our second hypothesis um, is gonna focus on increases in social media. Um, usage is going to decrease our social well-being. Um, and kind of with this, we've been engaging more um, with social media with all the lockdowns and things like that. So just finding other ways and avenues to speak and talk to and engage with people that we aren't necessarily able to um, on a daily basis like we were before. Um, because of this, TikTok in 2020 saw a growth rate of 85%. Um, you can also look at other platforms such as Zoom, which saw a tremendous leap. Um, you can also look at Facebook, which saw an 8.7% growth rate. Um, a study done by the University of Pennsylvania um, found that usage or high usages within Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat, all increased your sense of loneliness. 
Um, and that same study actually found that um, reducing these, um, reducing your time basically with these applications will help reduce your loneliness. Um, and then, <coughs> oh, yeah. And then also, so with this, we had increases in other avenues such as um, messaging platforms. Um, so like your gaming platform, so gaming chats, um, iMessaging, WhatsApp, um, all of those did notice a 20 minute increase per day. So this is the age of the survey response. Obviously we wanted Northern Michigan University students. That's basically what we got here. So not too, not with the data, obviously. Majority is in that 18 to 24 range, so very pleased with, with how the uh, survey in that regard came out. And social media usage per day, so obviously one of our questions, we asked this to all the individuals, and this is the graph, um, basically. Majority was in that two to four range, so it definitely shows the amount of social media that all these people are using a day, and just the graph shows what the people said their social media habits are. And also something to note on this graph is most responder here was admin, and because a lot of admin are in the CC now, they are spending less time on social media. So it doesn't seem like I created reflect like all of the students because most of our acquaintance are like admin and most of them we we like to put the admin with the sharing. So yeah. So our survey plan, um, so it's just like we did like last time, it hasn't really changed. Um, we analyzed data collected from the survey. The only difference is we wanted 300, but we only got 143. Some of our teachers were uh, stubborn and didn't send out the email until like today. Um, and then so I, we did the survey on cold trips, obviously, for the Northern Michigan University students. Um, it did consist of 13 questions. It was still the same. Um, knowing the demographic of the survey was very important um, because we asked age and where they're from and where they lived. Uh, we did make it five, 10 minutes, though we never changed that. Um, so it'd be easy, fast, accessible, and students didn't feel like they were pressured or had to miss like class time, whatever, or study time to take the, um, the, um, the test, and then they could put in the results right away for us. And then this is the, um, the frequencies and variables and stuff, and we have gender um, for the males of 48 and the females 52. Um, and then you can see our percentages of like for white 82, black African American 10, American Indian are um, 0.78, Asian was 0.78, uh, Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander 2.3, and others were 3.14. Our mean uh, of age was 20, like we wanted uh, after the precautions. And then non employed was 67.50, uh, and employed was 32.50. And the condition off campus, we got a 42, and off campus, we got like 58.68 for those frequencies. Um, then, kind of just to wrap up with the sample plan, um, our population was just NMU students. Um, our sample frame was anyone over the age of 18. Um, our sample method uh, was just a culture survey in which we distributed throughout um, just different NMU emails. Um, and then our sample size was just the 143. We shot for the 300 responses, but came up short. Um, our data probably reflects that a little bit. Um, yeah. And but in our, in, our, in our paper that we find that um, for our, our hypothesis were correct that, that um, social well-being did affect like the amount of time that people were on their phones. Now that a lot of people didn't have, you know, they're not, they're not out and about. So a lot of them just did isolate themselves and stay on their phones during the time of COVID versus now. And also stuff to add on st what we could do next in our in our research is that maybe widen our population and not just add me because those are like <coughs> school like individual and groups and maybe next time we get more results and ask more people and maybe maybe ask faculty as well because Social well being could also affect them and it could affect how they they are gonna present that information that teaching and stuff. So that could also be something we look into next time. Okay. Thank you.